Hello, uh, back again. I'm Jacqueline Closemore and I'm coming to you live from Melbourne. I'm actually at the Perry Dontis office. Why not? Um, it's a very special day. Um, <laughs> I'm getting this a very special treatment. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say hi. Uh, you can also catch me as well on Facebook now. I've moved my little um, uh, Facebook page for my show onto Jacqueline Closemore Live. So if you're looking up on Facebook, find me. That's where you'll connect. Um, I'm going to be coming back every week. Uh, I'm going to take calls. I'm also going to take uh, from the show, do the 14 minutes thereabouts and move across onto Facebook and do live readings there as well. Uh, so if you're trying to reach me, that's where you can also find me. Uh, but yeah, it's good to be back on Moonstruck TV and A1R Psychic Radio around the world. I'm just having some fun with my, <laughs> my settings here. Uh, on my phone. It's sort of a, a very ad hoc situation. I just wanted to speak to the Black Lives Matter, um, you know, protests and uprising really that's going on around the world and really um, acknowledge uh, our Australian Indigenous elders past, present and still emerging uh, and also uh, pay special respects and um, acknowledgement to the traditional owners of our land uh, here in Melbourne. Uh, and across Australia, and uh, give thanks for the wisdom that certainly many Indigenous people that I know uh, share with me. And I just want to recognise the disparity in our community, uh, both here and around the world, uh, for people of colour, and um, really pay respect to all those people who are speaking up. Uh, I certainly do speak up for people of colour, um, and I stand with you. And one of my favourite uh, Olympians in Australia is actually Peter Norman and in the 1968 Mexico City Olympics he actually stood up on the podium uh, with John Carlos and Tommy Smith and um, they only had uh, one glove each uh, to do the um, you know black power signal and he stood there in solidarity with them so when you sort of see this picture of this white man standing with these guys um, you know He's actually standing in solidarity. He's wearing a badge that recognises their cause and for speaking up for equality. And um, I think it's really beautiful that people have recognised this more and more. As far as um, I can't breathe and some of the really awful posts um, that sort of raise a conspiracy about that, I'm not going to speak about that post and say what's on it. It's revolting. Um, what I want to say is that it's very right to for people to be able to chant, I can't breathe, um, to give recognition of that cause, um, give recognition of the need for police brutality to stop uh, for people of colour. And there is actually a high incident in Australia of only less than 3% of Australia's population is actually Indigenous, and yet it represents such a huge amount uh, and percentage of incarcerated people in Australia. And I can't breathe are actually the last words of David Dungai, uh, and I hope I've pronounced his name correctly. And I apologise if I haven't, uh, but that's his last uh, words as he was also held uh, uh, in, in, in a hold uh, that brought the end of his life. And I want to acknowledge that and the injustices going on in Australia and uh, really want people to think more about how they can help uh, to bring down systemic uh, racism in our country and around the world and think about equality uh, in everything we do. And as far as um, white people saying all lives matter, it's really important to understand that black lives have to matter as well first because they haven't been mattering enough and it's really good that people are starting to recognise that. So I really wanted to do, sort of talk about that first and I know that some people are really going to dislike me because of that. Um, you know what? Too bad. Uh, I've always spoken up for... Uh, my Indigenous brothers and sisters and um, people of colour and different cultures around the world uh, and here in Australia as well. And it's really important to, when when people in our um, politics are saying that, you know, don't import this issue, this issue has been here since the beginning, uh, you know, when Captain Cook went sailing around and declared this country uh, to be terra, terra nullius, which means no human life here, uh, and classified Indigenous people as fauna. Uh, and it's just reprehensible uh, that we still have these statues up uh, that stand monument to people who did massacres uh, against the Indigenous, very much existing people that were here before white people got here. And um, 
it's kind of bizarre that um, we talk about um, wanting to keep boat people out of Australia uh, when that's exactly how the first white people got here, uh, on boats. Uh, and when people talk in Australia about, um, you know, not wanting to let people come here and change our ways, uh, well, how, how, how many ways have we changed uh, since we've gotten here, uh, particularly of Indigenous people who are living in peace, thank you very much, uh, before we got here, and then we're going to get into a historical, historical argument about that, um, no doubt, but it's going to be really important to look at our future education. Um, when I was raising my children uh, and I was asked about the question that you all get asked about religious education, do you want religious education? So I actually asked them, well, is that religious education comparative religion of all religions? And is there going to be inclusion of Indigenous culture being taught as wishing to be shared by First Nations people uh, with the educational system? And I got told no. I said, okay, so what kind of education is it? And they said, oh, it's the Christian religion. I said, well, why can't it just be called Christian education instead of religious education? Uh, so really, I think um, when we look at racism, it really has to sort of start in the school system as to how we change. We're wanting to create change in the world. We need to look at the education system here and what information is shared from a young age with these, um, you know, the future of our generations and our community and how that comes together. And the real story being uh, spoken about, about particularly, um, you know, the massacres in Australia, uh, frontline wars uh, to do with Indigenous people being massacred by white people and Captain Cook, who first came here uh, and declared it terra nullius, uh, which means no one here, and declared Indigenous people as fauna, which they're not, uh, you know, and I think part of bringing about equality is actually bringing that into the education system. And so if you've got kids at school, it would be really good if you could actually speak up for actual equality, even in the way education is delivered. If you're an educator, well, you know, have you ever stopped and thought about the way we're actually teaching our future generations uh, to look at the world uh, and, you know, bring that in? And whatever country you're in, uh, you know, how are people of colour celebrated instead of, you know, attempts to make them invisible? Um, you know, to bring up that equality so that all lives can matter because black lives matter. Um, you know, black lives have to mat start mattering first before all, that, all lives can matter. So it's really important to bring in inclusivity here. And if you if you are white, um, white me, you know, use your privilege to help people. Use your privilege to give spotlight to people of colour, uh, and to certainly speak out against inequality. And and you know, have the difficult conversations with your family, uh, your friends, and you know, people you know, and on your public platform. Uh, I've certainly on my public platforms been promoting uh, particularly black artists, black singers, um, you know, and Indigenous people, um, you know, it, as well. And it's, it's really important to kind of look at how we can bring people up, not trying to bring them back down. And when we look at in our politics and people saying don't import an issue, the issue is already here. It's been here for since the first um, arrival of Captain Cook. Uh, so, I mean, you can't get more than that. So just have a think about this. Um, you know, some of these conversations are going to be quite uncomfortable. You might feel challenged. You might feel, well, I'm not like that. Yeah, okay, but the system is, you know, and what can we do to change the system? What can we do as ourselves in each day <laughs> to look at how we contribute to this and how we can change it? So I just think that's something that's really important in our world uh, if we're going to really be honest, um, you know, in wanting that equality. And one of the most spiritual things you can do is look at social justice. <laughs> so I think it's just a very important issue. I just wanted to start off. It's my first show back since January, but I think it's really important. It's not just topical right now. It's really been important for a very long time uh, to keep giving light to that and to be a true light where, okay, it just means you can't just go, oh, well, that's not comfortable. I don't want to look at it. And I don't want to watch the news. I don't want to deal with what's going on in the world. It's about participation. So. Just have a think about that. These are crazy times we're in, in the sense of everything being brought up for chaos and people can want normal again. But what if that normal wasn't actually good for everyone? What if that normal was harmful for some people in our community uh, that have been silenced for too long? And how about we stop being silent about that and actually deal with it and create the change that we need in the world? Not just whitewash our history uh, or whitewash our experience. So that's, um, that's me for today. And you don't like me because of what I've said, um, you know, and you want to go back to your comfortable world where everything's convenient to you, just think about the people that life is not convenient for right now. Just have a thought for them. And uh, sending you all out love and light. I'm going to be back on some 
um, interesting subjects over the next few weeks. And if you're wanting to find me on Facebook, uh, you can. Otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, day or morning on uh, A1R, Psychic Radio and Moonstruck TV. Lots of love, Jacqueline. Bye.